Okay, this is something I haven't showed. I'm not too easy to let some of this stuff out, but I've tried to let y'all have as much insight as I can. What I'm doing right now is number two of a process, I have two, for securing the back side of the porch. Now you can probably see some of this stuff on the net, but I'm going to show you the right way to do this. Economically speaking and for uh, protection, the older heads, once they've had a lot of water and antifreeze run through them, it eats away at the outside wall of the port and the water casting. Uh, what we got here is, especially if it's aluminum heads on an iron block, a, a process called ionization, which is where something with the molecules changes, where it erodes away at stuff, some kind of electrolysis deal. But just water and rust, it, after years and years, it eats away. That's why with the older heads, my factor of safety, I have to add additional meat when I'm in there with my sonic checker so that uh, I don't bust through. On this head here, which is a stage four uh, for a couple, Marty and Christy, what I'm doing here is I'm going to go inside the head, use my plate system, and I'm going to put a coating on this head, probably about 30 thousandths thick maybe, and it's going to be using pressure and heat and the head will be baked in the oven and when I'm done this uh, will add a safety of margin so that once the heads are ported years down the road there'll never be a problem with leakage because once you start porting a head really hard uh, and you get it say about a hundred thousandths at the thinnest spot maybe even ninety uh, it might be alright then and for the first year but after a while uh, eventually uh, erosion will come through by using this step that I'm using, it will extend the life quadruple fold at least by putting that coating. And how I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it through the water jackets. I'm going to have a plate on here and uh, it'll seal it up and use pressure. But I'll go step by step. But the first thing that you got to do on this deal is uh, make sure you got the head blowed out really well. And just to be on the safe side, as you can see, I got a little bit of carb cleaner and I'll just shoot some and you know a few places on here. I've already glass beaded as good as I can get inside the ports and I mean I have went over this several times. Um, Just to make double, quadruple sure. See, anywhere where there's a water jacket hole, shoot you some in there. And just pretty much clean it out. And that's all. It's kind of get the picture. I'm cleaning it out and it'll get really good inside the water jackets and all that stuff with the carb cleaner and then we'll be ready to go ahead after I air it out for a minute or two and I'm going to show you the process of it. This is called uh, version 2 uh, securing the head and what I do called pumping which absolutely on anything that you've got several hundred dollars in saying I, I do it automatically over a stage five and this right here will give you some safety and some longevity. Okay, here we are with the basic setup excuse me and I want to point out first there's a more economical way to do this I mean for you guys that are wanting to do this at home believe it or not there's an economical way to do this, and I'm not going to go into it right now, but a brief description. You can't pressurize it, but what you can do, believe it or not, you can take duct tape and cover a couple of times here and here, all the water passages, turn the head upside right, 
take your barbecue grill that you cook your hamburgers in, put you a brick or something underneath it to level it, use your level, and just pour the uh, chemical in here. First what you do, you heat the head. Now this is where it's tricky. You can't get it too hot or it will melt the duct tape. Okay? So what you got to do is get it, I don't know, I'd say probably somewhere close to maybe 100 degrees. Get the head warm and then just take your funnel and pour the coolant in till it levels off on both sides. Shake it a little bit. Now you're going to start seeing a little bit of steam where that duct tape's getting hot. If you got a heat gun, you can shoot it and try to get it, I don't know, between 100 and 110. Um, that's going to be the point there that you want to watch it because then the duct tape might start letting go. And then you just shut the heat off and let this thing sit there until it cools down to room temperature. And then just pour the stuff back out in the bucket. That's better than nothing and actually don't do too bad of a job. I've done it that way before I got the plate system. Okay, now, let's get into the way that I'm doing it, which is the professional way. It also costs a few extra.